Hey everybody, Rachel here with Give Butter. Thanks for joining for another success story from the Give Butter community. Today we are featuring the Children of Armenia Fund, also known as Co-op. This nonprofit officially raised the single most funds raised in a campaign on Give Butter. Are you curious how much that is? $4.5 million. Yes. This is all in an effort to support the children of Armenia. I have Haig and Ariel here with me to share how they were able to create such an engaging star-studded televised benefit. They're also going to share what made them turn to give butter. And you know them, you love them. Tips, tricks, lessons learned along the way so we can all give butter with give butter. Thank you both so much for joining today. Thanks for having us, Rachel. You bet. Happy to be here. So to start, why don't you both introduce yourself and what co-op does? Let's start with you, Hike. So um, Children of Armenia Fund Co-op uh, has been around for 17 years and we're all about rural development in Armenia, uh, primarily for children, for youth, and it's providing them the opportunities uh, to advance themselves and giving them access to education, healthcare, social services, and economic development programs. So we're in about 64 villages across Armenia and five different provinces. Uh, and, um, you know, in addition to our programs in the fields that I just specified, we also do infrastructure improvements in a lot of these villages. And we have a, we have a state-of-the-art facility uh, up in Northern Armenia, which we built from the ground up. And that serves, um, it's like an after-school center for children from the villages to come and take a lot of these courses. Beautiful, what about you? Uh, well, I'm Ariel Glassman uh, and I am actually a fundraising consultant and the managing director of the Virtual Gala Collaborative, um, which is the group that I worked with to um, put this event together. Um, and maybe I'll share a little bit about the background of it. One of the things I love working most on this event is um, it was a complete short-term pivot from a different plan. Mm. We were originally working on a replacement of the gala that they have every, uh, every fall, um, which is you know beautiful and very glamorous. And we were gonna go for something virtual like that. And then of course, um, you know the conflict in Armenia broke out and all of a sudden, completely different. So we went from, you know, glamorous online virtual gala holiday theme to emergency relief telethon. Oh. Uh, and thankfully we were able to, I think, um, carry on with some of the plans and videos we were making, but um, this was a very challenging moment for the organization. Uh, and the campaign really represents, I think, um, all the hard work that got put into what this organization wants to accomplish on the ground in Armenia. Amazing, amazing. So let's dive right into this beautiful benefit. Can you tell us a little bit more, Haig, about, you know, big picture? What was your goal? What were you hoping to accomplish? What were you thinking through in terms of fundraising strategy? You know, Rachel, we had a lot of um, challenges, just like a lot of nonprofit organizations this year. Uh, typically, we have a very fancy gala in New York at Cipriani's and uh, attended by about 500 people. Uh, and that's our main fundraiser. So this year, you know, with the pandemic, we're like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And so that's when we brought on Ariel and her team to sort of guide us with, the, you know, in, in coming up with alternative solutions to fundraisers. And, you know, we decided, obviously, we're going to go virtual. And, you know, Ariel can let you know a little bit more about why Give Butter exactly and how that came about. But, we also took advantage of this year of the fact that, you know, there's a huge Armenian community out here in Southern California, and they've got similar to the, uh, you know, the Latino communities. Uh, we, you know, there's networks here in Los Angeles that are Armenian language networks. And so we came up with a hybrid solution of having a virtual platform, okay? And also simultaneously having it broadcast on these Armenian networks here in LA. So. Uh, believe it or not, you know, most of our donor base was on the East Coast, specifically the tri-state region. Mm. And this was a wonderful opportunity for us to go global, thanks to the virtual component, and also extend our base out here on the West Coast, which has a very sizable Armenian community, uh, by making it available on these Armenian networks. So it was really like it, it was a it was a hybrid solution actually between the between the the local ethnic sort of our Armenian television uh, 
you know, channels as well as the virtual platform, which I think worked wonderfully for us. Absolutely. And I'm just curious, since you were branching out into new networks, so to speak, did you see any increase or difference in number of new don donors or supporters? I know you had almost over a thousand supporters on your campaign, right? Amazing. Right. Yeah. It, yeah, it was uh, a awesome. monster, in my opinion. Um, and I think that, you know, I think the TV had a lot to do with that, the simulcast, um, mm -hmm. but also the co-ops marketing team did a really great job promoting this event, you know, on social and, you know, my team had a, had some input into that strategy as well, but they really made it happen. And I think that that made the virtual reach even more than the previous virtual event we did in the summer with co-op. Right. Well, what did, what did they do in your opinion? What was like the secret sauce or the magic that they did in marketing that was different or really worked? Um, well, for one thing, we were sure to gather appearances for the show that we knew would be popular with the audience. Um, as you probably saw, there were a number of celebrities who either were of Armenian descent or are great friends to the Armenian community. And the organization really leveraged those relationships to bring those folks on board. And I think that was really exciting. And we rolled them out slowly. We didn't just kind of put it out in one burst. We created a rhythm. Um, meanwhile, this is happening with a team working in the US and a team working in Armenia 12 hours apart. So we were finding uh, late night collaboration meetings to be the best way to plan that. Definitely. Yeah. I remember I first saw the campaign um, when I was on Twitter. There was um, a little, I don't remember if it was a video or a picture, but it was Dan Levy. And I was like, oh, ah! so like totally speaking to me because I'd be so excited to see that appearance, right? So that's what first caught my attention. I love um, that you guys were slowly and intentionally teasing people and rolling that out, enticing them. Um, so let's talk a little bit more details like about, you know, Gift Butter being the fundraising platform that you chose, Ariel, what led you to that solution for co-op? Why was that the right thing? Um, what did that look like? Well, it's an interesting story. Cool. Uh, this was actually the third platform we basically were intending to use. Oh. Um, it, it had an auction component. So we originally went for something that had an auction component, which I know that Give Butter is putting together. It's gonna be really exciting. Um, but that first product was very, very new and unfortunately not as stable as advertised. So then we jumped to yet another product, which unfortunately was not able to handle international donors in the way that we needed it to at high volume. Um, so one of the reasons I jumped right to give butter was a, I've used it before and I know it's a very stable product and I can rely on it and B, it has great abilities to handle international registrants, international donors, and the kind of flexibility we needed to like not require physical addresses when people giving overseas don't exactly have the same kind of zip code or structure to their address. And obviously you guys have that stuff built in, but it was just an immediate choice for thinking we've got to be on top of creating something that can help us capitalize on this audience. Absolutely. And do you have, I guess this could be for either of you, as I share this beautiful, gorgeous page. And of course, everybody who's following along, we're going to link to all the things so you can check it out um, for yourself. And uh, you should definitely watch the entire thing, maybe twice. Uh, <laughs> as we're looking at this page, can you tell us about like logistics of how this worked tips tricks for those um, who are curious like how did you pull off this simulcast that you so speak of and what did it look like how did you guys pull this off well sure uh, and I obviously jump in um, no please you yeah. in terms of the simulcast we actually had a unique situation going we were in collaboration with the technical staff at the Armenian TV station uh, mm -hmm. ARTN in Los Angeles. Uh, and my team who works with a webcast producer in LA um, was actually running the show from the studio in collaboration with the staff who, you know, we met that week. Wow. Um, so it was a real collaboration with the TV station. Um, and essentially we broadcast the same signal to give butter and to the TV station. So everybody was seeing the exact same thing at the exact same time. Mm -hmm. uh, I am obsessed with having interactive live chat during my events. I've had it actually save the day a couple times when other systems, not get better, uh, actually literally broke in the middle of an event. So I love having it. And I loved that I was able to use HTML iframes here to put a live chat in. Um, even though obviously if you scroll a lot, you'll see that the Armenian community made incredible use of the ability to leave messages for each other and the supporter wall which I loved, and maybe Haig, you can speak to this, but it felt like a visualization to me 
of the incredible surge in just community togetherness and support that this whole time, you know, has brought forth in the Armenian community. And it was just beautiful to see it visualized there. Definitely. So this wasn't, I, cause I already know I'm gonna get questions in this um, on social. <laughs> How did you do this again? This was coded in? Yeah. So if you, um, where you edit your story on sort of the main page when you set up your event, um, there is actually, if you look for it, a little icon with two carrots, one pointing left and right, and that's for HTML code. Mm -hmm. And so um, the webcaster I work with has a custom system for um, certain types of streaming and also a chat function. So we built this custom chat box and put it in. But you could also put one from YouTube in there, Vimeo, anything that's HTML iframes. Um, and I love the flexibility of that. I really did. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, we loved that. Our whole team was definitely nerding out when we saw that. Uh, <laughs> I also noticed that you're still getting donations in well after your event. So are you sharing this somewhere? How is that happening? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's we still we're still pushing it out on social media, um, with e-blasts, you know, talking, you know, thanking donors asking people, you know, if they didn't get to watch it, it's not too late. Here's a replay of it on Give Butter. Um, and, uh, you know, so people are watching it and, and donating. And, you know, there's something to be said. You're, the fact that our donor base is mostly Armenian, it travels a lot. So you've got like, you know, Armenians mostly in North America, but all over the world sharing now. So they're like, oh my God, take a look at this program. Take a look at the power of social media, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of people are talking about, hey, did you catch that great program, you know, uh, and sharing it with one another. And then people are watching, you know, replays of it and getting inspired to donate. So, um, you know, that, that's what's going on. I love yeah. it. Thank you for sharing uh, the process mm -hmm. there. That's another yeah. question you know, I'm going to get asked. <laughs> um, so, hi, I'm wondering what's next? What is the future of fundraising for your organization? So it's a very good question. Um, you know, I was talking about the uh, the gala that we do in New York every December. And I think that no matter what, uh, you know, with the pandemic and all next year, um, I think in Ariel and I have talked a lot about this. I think the future of fundraising for nonprofits is, is has changed. And, you know, for, for 16 years, we just did this, you know, very fancy, uh, uh, gala, but now we're realizing that moving forward, you know, just like the Golden Globes or the Academy Awards, um, having, you know, having the, 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 the event, the fundraiser, the benefit also shown virtually simultaneously. And why not? You know, we would also uh, utilize these Armenian networks here in Los Angeles and also get it on TV. So I think the model moving forward is even if we do have the in-person fundraisers we're definitely going to make them available virtually and 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 on armenian television here in la so uh i don't see us as an organization you know relying just on having a sit-down gala for 500 people when um you can increase your your donor base and your and your constituency by by making the uh the fundraiser available to so many other people on different platforms the future is hybrid. That's what I'm hearing you say. It is hybrid. It's definitely hybrid. You yeah. know what I mean? There's one thing. I mean, you could stream an event, right, on Facebook Live or Insta, Instagram. Uh, but the fact that, you know, our issue was like, how do you watch and donate, right? And so the hybrid model was, okay, great. You know, on, on Give Butter, it's obvious how you can donate. But then, you know, we were very creative as a team. And I told Ariel, I said, listen, I said, you know, the demographic that's going to be watching it on television, though, is not necessarily tech savvy. It's more like the grandmas or like, you know, uh, uh, you know, a certain generation that isn't necessarily Internet savvy, isn't going to go in and know what to do on 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 Give Butter. So we we had different options available and we had to create, you know, like a, a phone number for them to dial in and donate some people by phone. You know what I mean? And and set up a phone bank volunteer system. So. You have to think of all the different um, avenues to create that hybrid model that you know we're talking about. So, yeah, does it seem archaic to do a telethon where you know you've got people calling in or or, or gift to text 
So we had different models. Go online and donate. If you can't, for whatever reason, call this number and a phone bank volunteer will help you or text blah, blah, blah to this phone number and, and, and donate that way. And the phones were um, right off the hook. You know, I think we expected it to be sort of a, an afterthought and it was not. Interesting. Uh, and thank goodness we had enough volunteers and a system in place to handle the volume of it. Um, it was intense. Yeah. Totally. But hybrid models, like don't stick to just like one way of doing things, okay? Mm-hmm. You have to change things up. You have to give people different options and you have to always put yourself in the shoes of the donor and what age demographics. So like with Ariel, like a lot of the times, you know, we were talking on the phone, you know, having our meetings and my mom would be in the hallway, you know, and my mom's like 70 and she's going to kill me for just announcing her age. Um, and I'm like, mom, would you, you know, da, da, da. she goes, well, you know, if I'm watching it on the Armenian network, I'm going to call the number probably uh, the text message. I mean, it was just a lot of it was, Finding out what in the community. We we looked to the people who represented the demographics mm-hmm. that we knew we wanted to participate. Um, and I think we really struck gold doing it that way. And I would also like yeah. to point out while we're on the topic of Haig's mom that she came up with the name <laughs> for this event. Ooh. You know, once we decided that we had to go more in this emergency telethon format instead of the gala, we knew we needed a brand that reflected what we were trying to accomplish. Um, and you know. Haig's mom was behind on a Zoom call and we just said, well, you know, why do you give to co-op? And she said, because you guys move mountains for the kids. And it was, that was it right there. And then, so of course, with the graphic design, if you go to it, you can kind of see some of the elements. That's actually um, Mount Ararat in Silhouette, which is the most, you know, famous and loved mountain in a very mountainous country, Armenia. Mm -hmm. We were trying to connect it visually as well as Mm -hmm. something that literally came straight from the horse's mouth, not that your mom's mom's I love that so much. (laughs) Um, just to close here, I'm wondering if you both had one quick word of advice for all the fundraisers who are watching right now. Mm. Choose your technology wisely. Um, you know, we had a journey with this event on it and bells and whistles and new stuff is great, but when it comes down to it, you need something that is reliable and something that is easy and as frictionless as possible, um, which you know, give butter fits the bill for me. I'm doing other campaigns on it right now. So pick your tech wisely. Um, don't be afraid to try new things. Don't be try to leverage all the features, but um, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, thank God for Ariel because I'm not a tech guy, you know? So I was like, what platform, you know, let me know. I'm a fundraiser, you know? So um, I'll, I'll repeat what I said. I think hybrid models for fundraising are great. Don't stick to the same way of doing things. Um, you know, make sure you're calling your donor base prior to any event and getting, you know, commitments and things like that. Um, be very, I don't want to use the word aggressive, but use your social media, use your contacts, um, get the word out there because obviously, and, and you said it, Rachel, even after the event, we're getting donations coming in because we're still, uh, promoting the event and the cause. And so, um, you know, and these are more general fundraising, you know, uh, advice and tips, but be clear with your messaging um, and what you're doing, you know, know who your circle of supporters are and try to utilize them as best as possible and get them vested into the, into the mission of the organization. Um, these are all very important things. It's, it's about communications. Um, and uh, there's another thing. It's really about stepping up and telling your community what you need. You know, if you watch the messaging in this event, we were very clear. We are building X number of homes for people who are displaced refugees. And of course, there's fine print where we're using it for a variety of our initiatives, but we were able to create a really great illustration of the need and work to bring it to donors in a vulnerable way. You know, mm-hmm. I think that setting a big giant goal like that publicly, you know, um, having the kind of emotion that was involved from the host and the CEO and the people in the videos. Um, if you don't present what you need to the world, they can't give it to you. So that, as I think, is another great piece of advice that I would give to any nonprofit right now. Be transparent and vulnerable about what you need, and the people who love you will step up, and they will get yes. So good. Excellent words of advice. Powerful. Thank you both so much for using Give Butter, for sharing this inspiring event, and for letting us uplift your incredible success story today. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you so much, Rachel. And everybody and, else. And Ariel, thank you for choosing Give Butter. <laughs>
Thank you so much. We love our partners. Um, and for everybody else who's following along, we look forward to seeing you next week. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to Get Butter's YouTube channel so you never miss a success story again. Until next time, goodbye, everybody.